Oh, it looks nice. Yes, good, good haircut. Lake Moy. It's good, Lake Moy. All right, welcome everybody. So, how have all of you been doing this past week? How are things going? Yes. Did you guys also hear again? There was another murder. Do you know who it is? Also your friend. You see that drop in that then that that guy that boy they stay killed. That guy that boy is killed. They stay in the on the same street. That's the friend of his boy. They don't like that. Okay. Now what can I know again? But what did this guy do? They say he wants to stay the boy, then the boy is taken first. Again? Yeah. What is this step of all the time? Uh, All the nuts must be taken away. Then fight like this, yeah, man to man. The, 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 the bigger picture, the bigger boys are killing the smaller picture. Those big boys. Yeah. If I would be a Christian, yeah. I would take okay. the one. The one who, who is killed was older than the one who is killed. The one who is killed was older than the one. Oh, so the, the perpetrator, perpetrator is younger. Was running, they were running. It was in uh, uh, morning hours. No, but that's half. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm sorry to hear that. But I'm sorry to hear that. But what is the reason? The other one wants to keep. Well, why? Why did he, he want to? Know why the oh, no, but not the reason. But they say they didn't want to stay down there first. Okay. okay. Oh, they had a quarrel over most of them. What is he doing out there in the lake? Ah, the drinking. Oh, I know. Oh, nice fun. And we get another one. Nice. Not fun. Sad, really sad. But you see, that thing where it happened, no? Um, yeah, lots of people, lots of people were scared to death there. Yeah, many people died there. 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 Many people died There is always a reason why things happen, even if we do not understand it. The Bible does warn about these kind of things. I already mentioned this to some other people. Bad company spoils good character. So, it speaks in Proverbs about this. Where there are these kind of friends that entice you to do bad things. So you must be careful which company you keep. It's very important that you choose your friends wisely because things like this can happen, especially if you do things like this. This is why God's Word also warns us regarding these kind of things. Do you know where in Proverbs it speaks about the person who is drunk, where King Solomon spoke about how it's like to be drunk, how it numbs you, how you want to drink the next day again. Let me just quickly check. Because it stands in the Word of God, all these things, it warns about these kind of things, not to do these kind of things. And it tells you what kind of an effect it has on you and why you should not be doing such kind of things. This man... King Solomon, 
That stands in Ecclesiastes. Can you look, Papa, for the passage in Proverbs, the chapter, and I will look in Ecclesiastes? I'm going to tell you a little bit something about King Solomon. That is in the Old Testament. I actually do not know what it's called. Yes, in front of But before we do that, let us first pray like we always usually do. Yeah. Our Father, we really have reason to pray. You see what's going on here and up here. I've been down in Nivaris and I saw how many people are drinking, how drugs are being sold. I've seen that already in the past as well. And then we also see that murders are taking place as well. So, Father in heaven, we want to pray for the families who have lost loved ones recently, that you comfort them. We want to pray that you comfort the family of the perpetrator, the one who is the murderer, because you also died for him. I'm reminded of Moses, who was a murderer himself. But you then used him greatly for your kingdom. He was the most humble man in the world. After you let him go through the desert, he had to go into the desert. He had to be a shepherd for quite a considerable amount of time. But after the 40 years, if I remember correctly, you had molded him and shaped him, and he was ready to be that useful vessel, vessel of honor that you can use for your glory and honor. So I pray for this young boy, for the teenager who committed the crime, that you reach him where he's at, that you send people who are your children to witness unto him and that he repents of his sins and that you become his Savior, Lord Jesus, so that he can be used for your kingdom as you did with many people. This is not the only example. There are so many who you changed. John Newton, Paul, and there are many more that could be named, Lord. And I just want to pray that your peace, your shalom, will reign supreme in Napier. We bind the forces of darkness 
that are causing murder, murderous, unclean spirits, hatred, jealousy, envy, whatever the reason is, Lord, you know the hearts of men. You are the one who knows our hearts. You know that our hearts are utterly despicable, evil. Only you can know our hearts. But you can also change our hearts, which is what you promise in your word. You give us a new heart. You create in us a clean heart. And this is what I pray for everyone specifically involved in this crime that was committed and also for all the other crimes which we've heard today that have been committed and are being committed, Lord. I pray that people will have hope because only you can give people hope. I pray for this. In Jesus' name, Amen. Father, it's said again, young life is gone, and this life was precious to you. But as my brother, my son said, the other life is just as precious. We know, Lord, that we look at people all the time. Say, oh, that's a good person. Oh, that's a bad person. Oh, I like this guy. No, I don't. You don't look like this. You look at the heart of man, you know, all men are sinners, all men need re redemption, all men need to be forgiven. You love all men. You died for all men, no matter who it is. Whether it's a king or whether it's a beggar, whatever, you love men because their souls are important for you. And then men live for all eternity. And the devil, he misled them in the time of Adam and Eve ever since Man is a fallen creature and became an opposition, became an enemy of God. And still, you reach out to Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, in order to save man. Man who hate you. Man who do evil. I was the same. I didn't care about God. I cared about everything but the devil did. But you saved my life too. And ever since I know God is love. But it's not a petty love. It's not a cheap love and grace is not cheap grace it's expensive it costs the son of god his life he was murdered yes he was murdered he was dead to death so much even though there are other people but it's the sin that kills killed him and it's the love that kept him on the cross until it was finished so great is the love of god for us too late to pray for the young man, but we can pray for the other. We pray for the, for, for the families of both men. Because there must be agony, there must be pain, maybe hatred. This is what men do. But you want to forgive. I pray that there will be peace in the hearts of both men involved. And that they will see it as an opportunity to cry out to God. And you will answer. God is not a fiction. God is not a, a daddy. God is real. And God is just. And God is holy. And God is good. And God is without prejudice. And God is correct. You don't look at the heart. You don't look at man. You want man to come to you. Confess their sins and ask you for forgiveness. And you will forgive. Because you love man. You respect your body. And that's why we pray for this family and everyone involved. That it is an opportunity that they don't start now hating and I give it back to you and all this kind of but this thing. Man, what, what, why? Why is it? Did you, did you speak to them, Lord? Did you speak to them? Say, I love you. I want to come to you. I want you to come to me. Lord, please have mercy on all of us. All the people in Nivares. But not only Nivares, it's Blackstone. It's here, in this place here, part of Napier. There's just as much as sinners. They might be now more sophisticated. They might have more uh, riches. They might have power. But they're just the same. There's no difference. 
The blood of Jesus must cleanse all men from the world. That's why we pray for all men in this world. And ask God for your mercy and grace that will be revealed. Yes, even down there with this people are have brains stuck in the mind of God. Even this video, Lord, save the man's soul, Lord. They're just, they're just lost. It's all what they are lost. Maybe the upbringing was hard. The upbringing was not good. They had a lot of back uh, problems and fathers and mothers have been harsh. And I can testify about my father. He was hard. So I understand. But I do understand that you want to save them. Because life runs out. And eternity is looming on the horizon. And one day they have to meet you face to face. And it's not good to go into death without being reconciled with God through Jesus Christ. And that's how we pray. We ask in the name of Jesus, it's going to happen there. One by one, Lord. And we use our young friends and brothers here in a way that people might see also Christ in them, which they will. They make a difference, a difference there, Lord. And I know you will. So we thank you now, Lord, in Jesus' name, for the Bible study you have. Sorry for praying long, but it's really in my heart to say those things to you. And that you bless now what we do. In the name of Jesus. I don't know whether Dylan will come and diligent. Uh, Delano. Delano, Lord, you will, you will come. Dylan is in a dangerous place. We spoke to him many times. But all right, we'll see what we trust you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we are going to be in the back and we are going to be in the back and we are going to be in the back and we are going to be in the back. We are going to be in the back and we are going to be in the back. We are going to be in the back and we are going to be in the back. In the name of Jesus, 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 we share the family, we need to make sure that we can also make sure that we can 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 make sure Ready? Use my leg. Don't worry. Can <laughs> break is gonna. Who must pray now? Hey! Come on. There's you always know, the, the opportunity, pray, but nobody's forcing. It's normal. It's just speaking to God. You're not under pressure here. You're not under pressure. Hey, no. No, no, no. That's it. That's it. You can choose one, yes. Fifty. 
Thy loving kindness. Faithdoch. Because this is the songbook of the English word. That's why. I think there's one upstairs. You can sing so long. I'll check if there's one Afrikaans in up there. Thy loving kindness is better than life. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee, thus will I bless thee. Thy loving kindness is better than life. The second verse the same. I lift my hands up unto thy name. I lift my hands up unto thy name. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee. Thy loving kindness is better than mine. Thy loving kindness is better than love. My loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee, thus will I bless thee. Thy loving kindness is better than life. I lift my hands up unto thy name. I lift my hands up unto thy name. My lips shall praise thee, thus will I bless thee. Thy loving kindness is better than mine. You see, this is just all kind of English. Uh, blessed be, it means actually bless you. Uh, all English words like this. This is the English complication. Some, there are some English and some other words. That's why you use this be and thou and thy. Normally, I say, you, you, you. Mm -hmm. uh, that's right. Okay. Uh, number 51, 8. Okay, let me up here. All heaven declares the glory of the risen Lord. Who can compare with the beauty of the Lord forever he will be the lamb upon the throne I gladly bow the knee and worship him alone I will proclaim the glory of the risen Lord was slain to reconcile man to God. Forever you will be the Lamb upon the throne. I gladly bow the knee and worship you alone. Yes, here, if you want to look through it. Which is uh, Afrikaans English. Yeah, Afrikaans Ida. Have you looked up here? It's the seventh thing. Then you can look through it, there are a lot of songs there. It's in English, so you can type up, type up the song. Here, here, and me. It's Afrikaans. Oh, yes, it is. We can also make a songbook in Afrikaans, yes. Mm. 
So this is the beginning of yeah. the song. Imagine it. So this is one song after some five or and then three and a lot of different songs that and not only about the sound, the one at the beginning looks like a song sound. And here Mark opening half the fourth. You know what opening half the fourth? Mark can be the title of the song. So but uh, if you can look through it and see if there's something you know. Hmm? There's only one, I'm sorry. So you guys have to look through it together. You can look through it, both of you, and see if there's something that you know. And then we can sing it at the end of the Bible study. We still want to sing 65, and then we can start. Yes. Yeah. It's a new commandment I give on you. 65. Mm, faith and sister. already in the past if there are any songs that you guys know in Afrikaans any Christian songs we can also learn we're also willing to learn the songs to dance, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bethel Kirk. Unfortunately, I do not know the, the brother's name okay. to my shame. But you see, that's the thing. Sorry for interrupting. What do you want to say? That's the thing you can talk. Good. All right. So, that song that you have, we can sing that at the end then. And if you want, you can also look if there's something that you know, and then we can sing that as well. So, then let us read. Where did you say we were? In Proverbs? 23 verse 29 to 25. Proverbs. Proverbs, 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 Proverb
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much, Okay, Proverbs 23, 29. So what do we see here? What does it say? So it says, what kind of an effect alcohol has on the human being? When you drink, it's like you feel no pain. You want to have more. It shows you here that drinking once usually is not enough. You need to drink more. It bites like a serpent and stings like an adder. You behold strange women and your heart utters perverse things. Remember that it says in God's word, what is in the heart comes out of the mouth. If you are filled with filth, then that will come out. I once heard, I do not know whether this is correct, I've actually never verified it, that if you want somebody to speak the truth, you give them alcohol, because then they start speaking the truth. It does something with you. Some people become aggressive when they start drinking, and others become funny when they start drinking. All right? You have these different kinds of people. So it has an effect on you, on your spirit, not just on your body. As we see here, somebody beats you, doesn't hurt. Well, it didn't hurt. Somebody hits me, doesn't hurt. It gives a numbing effect. Do you guys know the Titanic? Have you ever heard of the Titanic? The ship that sunk. It was a big ship. I a movie Titanic. Yes, there is a movie Titanic. It's based off of a real life event that took place. A huge ship sunk. I think it was in the Pacific Ocean, right? It was in the highest 
It hit an iceberg, they say. Yeah. Yes. As it was it on its way from Great Britain to the United States I of America, America, I think. So it was on its way from Great Britain to America. Long way. Yes, long way. But back then they did not have planes, so they would go with ships. If they had to go somewhere, they would go with a ship from one continent to another. If you would want to go to Europe or to Asia, so I was a lot of people in there. You'd go with a the ship. There were a lot of people inside. A lot of people died because they sunk. They were sunk. But the interesting thing is, it is said that a man said of the Titanic that not even God can sink the Titanic, and then it was sunk. So many times people say, God cannot destroy something like this. Look at what we've built. It reminds me of Babel. They built a huge tower. They wanted to build it all the way up to God. I know you know it, but the language is... Yes, that's where we all get our different languages from. Yeah. That's why everywhere in the world there are different languages. Verschillende Talen, Oras in die Welt, Werbe. It's because God confused the languages. And I once studied Anglophone studies, which is English, and I learned that the languages, they have a common language. At the beginning, we all had the same language. So even that can be proven. Oh, our language actually used to be the same. It's very interesting. It's always interesting to find out things like this. So I remember that. I do not know whether this is with every language or whether it was only, I think it was only the European languages, maybe some other languages, but you can see that we once had the same language. Also, many nations, one word explains the same thing. So, they don't have a different word for book. A book is a book. If you translate it, book in English, book, German, Buch. Book, Buch, sounds similar. Yeah. Alright? So, there's not a different word. In German, we do not call it Tasche, bag. It's a book. And it's the same thing in Russian, in Afrikaans, book. So, there's the same kind of word to describe what this actually is. So, yes? It's a small book. You say it's a small book. Yeah, that's a small book, yes. <laughs> this is a pocket book, because it fits into your pocket. So, it then shows you that you can be sexually immoral because you will behold strange women. It's usually very easy to have sexual intercourse then. When you're drunk, many people have sex then. And then you feel like you are on the sea, going to and fro at the beginning. If you drink more and more and more, eventually your body gets used to something. But with some people, they say they cannot hold their liquor. They drink one glass and they are already topsy-turvy. They're already drunk. Or even half a glass. Some people are like that. And other people can drink a lot. <laughs> but that's why God warns against these things. This man who wrote this is King Solomon. King Solomon was a king. He was the son of King David. King David was called a man after God's own heart. And his son became the king after he died. And he was the wisest man in the world. God gave him wisdom like he's never given any other person before. It says that he had the kind of wisdom that nobody will ever have after him and nobody before him ever had. So he was the smartest, not Albert Einstein and not Elon Musk and whoever else you can think of. He was the smartest man, apart from Jesus. <laughs> because he gives wisdom. He has more than and he is wisdom. Why has more than Jesus? Nobody is smarter than Jesus. But from human beings, he was and is the smartest. And he wrote this because what he did, he experienced these things himself. He wanted to know what it's like. And that's why now we can go to Ecclesiastes. That is the book after this one. So, this one. Yeah. This one. This one. Should we go here? Let me just quickly check. 
for Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes. Do you know that which stands where he decided to drink and things like this? I'm not sure which chapter. But it looks about the penalty and stuff like this. Mm. All the penalty is there. All the penalty, penalty, penalty. So what he says in this book, unfortunately I cannot find it right now, but he mentions that he gave himself over to folly, so to foolish things. He drank, he married hundreds of women, he had all sorts of riches that you can imagine. He was the richest man, maybe during his day and age. I'm not sure, actually, I have to verify that, but he was very rich. And he experienced all these kind of things. And in the end, he said, everything is vanity. So everything is basically useless. What if I, for example, he mentions, if I save a lot of stuff, how do I know that my son after me is not going to be a fool? And he's in here, don't cook me. He's going to take my money and waste it. How do I know, for example? So it's vain. So me trying to get as much money as I can. And then after I die, can I take it with me? No. You do not take anything with you when you die. Naked, you were born, and naked, you shall go. You have nothing. So everything he realized is vain. But he came to one conclusion, and that's very important. What did he say in the end, after he tried all of this, after he had all of the women that his heart desired, after he had all the riches, silver, during his time, silver was not worth anything. So, he had everything you can think of during his day and age. And yet, after he had done all of these things, he drank, and all of these things, he realized it's all useless. But there's one thing that we have to recognize and remember, and that stands at the end. Chapter 12? That's in chapter 12. Yes, fourth stick. 12. Yeah, the book. Yeah. Who would like to read can read. Tot die einde. Tot vers 14. Das 
Spirit of God. Yeah, by your grace, very fancy, minor, as well, he has focused on as the full worship for consent in all the Solar family, labor, labor, work, shall work. Work shall hide. Half days per, some days per uh, worker in. Sarapam, Tamar Shalomdi, Akalma, Tamar Shalomdi, Pat, Yes, Indi, Amanda Mubisaw, and Und das 
ਕਿੰਨੀ ਬਾਰੀ ਇਹ ਆਇਓ ਇੱਕ ਇੱਕ ਕਿ so we see here in the end the most important thing that he mentions that is the conclusion that he comes to is fear god and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man for god will bring every deed into judgment including every hidden thing whether it is good or evil so you can do good you can do evil but everything will one day be revealed remember i've already said in the past what we do in the dark will be revealed by the light wat ons in die donkerheid doen dat sal in die licht kom and that's what he says fear god and keep his commandments fearing god doesn't mean <laughs> i'm hiding from him now so i'm scared of him but it means to honor him to give him reference to respect god many times people don't respect people anymore but we need to have this kind of a fear yes also trembling moses said he trembled when he was in front of god shaking out of fear that's who god is god is not some as people make him out to be but he Yes, he is our friend, but he's also someone who needs to be respected and feared. Because he is the one as Moses says in Psalm 90. Just quickly read a little bit out of there. Psalm 90. Psalm 90. Psalm 90. Psalm 90. 12. Mhm.
there stands, teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. You can read in Afrikaans, what does it say? Verse 12. Psalm 90, verse 12. Now, what else does he say? I'm going to read a little bit more of what he says here. Nirantar verse 5. You sweep men away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. Though in the morning it springs up new, by evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins, in the light of your presence. Just quickly going to check. Maybe somebody said somewhere else. So, look at how Moses, this is the man I just spoke of. Remember I spoke about Moses. Moses was the man who murdered an Egyptian. He killed someone. And he became the most humble man. What is humble? Uh, no, not proud. The opposite of pride. So he was that. He was very humble. And he writes, how he writes, who is the one who consumes us by his anger? who terrifies us by his indignation, who sets our iniquities before us and our secret sins in the light of his presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. The length of our days is 70 years, or 80 if we have the strength. Yet their span is but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. So he is the only one who deserves our fear. Because he is God. But we as human beings, we are very much affrighted, very much scared of many things. Many things make us afraid. Like being killed by being stabbed or something like that. Being shot. That makes me afraid. But the word of God says, perfect love casts out all fear. If we have God, Jesus, it says in John 17, 17, Johannes 17, 17, that's done, God is love. God is lifted. And when we have God in us, it says perfect love casts out all fear. So when we have been perfected in love, we must become perfect in love, because then we will not be afraid anymore. It's so another thing which I also wanted to mention, we read now Psalm 90, 12, and we also read in Proverbs. I'm just quickly going to go over here to Proverbs and check this one out. What stands there? But this kind of fear, what was interesting, 
to me. The people, the Christians, who used to live in the first and second century, they were not afraid to die. And I was not bang on the stair. Für die Jere. Yeah? Because they knew that when they die, they will be with God. And we must have that same kind of mindset. We must also know, hey, if I'm found worthy, I love how it says it in the Word of God, how I spoke to my father, it stands in Philippians in the New Testament. You can go there, yes. That's in the New Testament. Two Philippians, the book after Ephesians. Excuse. Hofstück Ian. Vers 12, Tod 14. So, uns ist in Philippians, Hofstück Ian. Vers 12, Tod 14. Whoever wants to read, can read. Vers 12, ja. Fang Vers 12 ab. Ja, 
So what do we see here? It's, he speaks about, this is Paul writing to a church in a place called Philippi, like this place here where we live is called Napier. So he wrote to a church in Philippi. And he said the following in verse 14. Because of my chains, most of the brothers in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. Can you imagine that if a person, I'll just put myself in his shoes, if I were tied up somewhere for the sake of the gospel, because he was preaching the word of God, they threw him in jail. And because he was thrown in jail, he says, now people are encouraged even more to preach the gospel. Would that be normally the case? If I see someone speaking about God and the police comes and grabs him and throws him into jail, and come and eat drunk, then you'd be afraid to speak, right? But he says that this encouraged people to speak even more fearlessly. So they were not afraid. They saw him. Oh, they took him and threw him in jail. Now I'm going to do the same. But he wasn't afraid. They were not afraid. He was not afraid. They were not afraid. But he had to ask people. Because in Ephesians, he also asks, that's the book before this one. It's Ephesians 6. The book, yeah, the book right here, Ephesians 6. Yeah. Verse 19 to 20. Yeah. What's down there? Uh, 
ਸਾਰੀਆਂ ਦੋਸਤੋ ਕੀਤਾ ਤੂੰ ਤੂੰ ਇੱਕ ਸਾਰੇ ਪਰੇ ਹੋਰ ਹੋਰ ਬਾਤ ਤੇ by donkey so what do we see here what does paul say let's say paulus in the first hey is alvia in the trunk <laughs> so he's again in jail you must go to jail then you throw the word you must come out and throw the word three weeks to yes even though he is physically in chains because that's what they did back then nowadays they don't usually put you in chains unless you are a very dangerous criminal and they will handcuff you and sometimes they will put chains around your feet and your hands so that you cannot do anything but usually behind your back that's more difficult if i put them in the front that you choke them so it's not very wise but usually behind your back and what does he say pray for me we need to pray for each other for boldness he says he asks this church now this is another church that he asks in ephesians in ephesians he asks this church that they must pray for him that whenever he opens his his mouth that words may be given to him that he will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel so it is very important that we pray for our brothers and sisters who are being persecuted for Christ's sake because there are people nowadays in the world they are speaking the truth they are speaking the gospel you know what gospel means evangelii what be taken that evangelii is it in his god you can feel his god not exactly but it's about god yes is goeie nuus ja evangelie beteken goeie nuus good news good news about what by god yes good news of jesus christ that's why it mentions it yes because there are a lot of gospels that are being preached many people say good news good news you can do whatever you want that's good news for some people other people say good news if you feel like you identify as a chicken then you're a chicken now start laying an egg <laughs> this is good news to some people that's why we must be very specific what good news are we professing what good news are we proclaiming the good news of jesus christ because there's also a different jesus being preached a jesus who is not the one we see in the word of god That's why it's very important we must spend time in God's word we must read God's word we must let God's word renew our minds change our hearts the holy spirit die geest van god hy lewe in ons hy verander ons ons gedagtes ons hart he changes us but we must pray ons moet moet bid We must pray for our brothers and sisters that are being persecuted in countries where they go out on the streets like for example Pakistan or other nations just to name an example where they go out they preach the gospel and they know that this could mean that they will lose everything they will lose their jobs their whole families might get thrown into jail or threatened they might come and threaten and say if you don't shut up about Jesus we will kill your family threaten threaten Yes. This happens. You might not hear excuse me, you might not hear about it in the news, but it happens. And these people need our prayer. It says Paul again mentioned, I think it's in Hebrews. I'm speaking under correction. He says we must pray for those who are in chains as though we were there with them. So, we must imagine ourselves we are also sitting in jail. Hi, next to the brother who's sitting right here. This must be our heart. That's how much we must love. We sang the song that we love one another. 
We must love one another in such a way that if a brother is in jail, it's as though I were in jail with him. That's love. So there's a lot that God must change in our lives. But the point I'm trying to make is we see this fearless proclamation. Now, I could show you many examples. I've written down a a few passages. There are way more where it speaks about what happened in the Bible, how they were taken and grabbed and beaten for proclaiming the word of God. But ever so often, we see it mentioned over and over and over again that we must be bold in the proclamation of the gospel. Be bold and courageous. Be fearless. We must encourage each other to not be afraid. And this is what God over and over and over again does. Encourages us. Like Jesus himself. He was also afraid. When he was in the garden Gethsemane, he also asked the Father, if possible, let this cup pass from me. Meaning, I do not want to have to die. He also did not want to die. He was a man like we. And yet, still fully God. But then he said, not my will, but your will. Be done. So even if I'm afraid, and we're all afraid, we still make the decision. I will not let fear rule my life. Because God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. The Holy Spirit is not a scaredy cat. He's not a coward. He emboldens us to be able to proclaim the gospel. Whether people like us or not, because if you read through God's word, the majority of the people did not like hearing the truth. It's the same today. Van Dach is the Uxo. Yeah, he says the Van Dach. The mensen will nie die evangelie van God hoor nie. Hulle will say, hulle will rumhoor, hulle will doen wat hulle will doen. They want to do what they want to do. But this is everything written in the word of God. It tells you everything in here. And I'm surprised, I was surprised, and I still am surprised. When I go down into Nuberus, I sometimes speak with people there, and they tell so many things about the Word of God. They know certain things. This stands in the Bible, that stands in the Bible. How do you know? <laughs> must be going to church, or must have gone to church before, or maybe you learned it in school, or maybe somebody told them, maybe their parents, maybe grandparents. But you see, just knowing something. It's not enough. If you know the truth and you do not apply what you know, the Bible says I'm a useless hearer. I can be sitting here every Monday or I can be teaching every Monday. And if I never put into practice what stands here, then I'm a useless proclaimer of the word of God. Everything I've done is useless. And so many people, they know the right thing to do, but they decide to do the wrong thing. Why? Because they love darkness more than the light. It's as simple as that. They love their sin more than they love God. And we must check our hearts. Do we love our sins? It must not be drinking. It must not be fornicating. It can be something as simple as our television series that we look at, or sitting around lazily, the Bible in Proverbs speaks about people, they sit there, they fold their hands, and they do nothing all day long. There is a layer. It's also a sin. So there are lots of sins. We always mention the, what we call maybe big sins. Oh, that's a real sinner. He sleeps around with women all the time. He drinks all the time. That's a big sinner. But in God's eyes, it's not like that. Yes, there are certain sins I must make very clear which he calls an abomination. Like homosexuality, for example, which is very much being taught nowadays. Also here in South Africa. And then there are sins where it says, these are the six, is it six sins that God hates? So there are six sins that he hates. 
So there are sins where he says, I hate this, or this is an abomination. I must actually look what the words in Afrikaans are. I will check it out and tell you what it means in Afrikaans. But God hates sin. Sin separates us from God. Jesus became a curse for us, sin for us, on the cross. He paid the price for us on the cross. I actually have to check if he became sin for us. Does it say that he became sin? He became. Uh, I have to check that. But he took our sins on himself. On our behalf. It's like somebody says, I see you're carrying this heavy bag here. And you cannot, you cannot carry it all. It's too, too heavy for you. And somebody says, I'll take it for you. And that's what Jesus did. He saw, the people can never bear this heavy burden alone. I'm going to take this for you. But now you must believe that I actually did what I said I did. And you must now take up your cross. You must take up your cross. And you must follow him. You take the cross. Yes, you must take the cross like this. Every day, everybody takes the cross. And you follow after Jesus. What the Bible says. These difficulties being persecuted, being hated, not uh, doing sin. It's a, it's a cross. It's heavy. That's what Jesus meant. So, we must be willing to do that. And Jesus says, count the costs. Count the cost. If you rather not, it's like if you start something and you never finish it. I used to be like that very often in my life. Start something, never finish. No good for no one. You start building a house, you have some money, you build the foundation, now you start building the side of the house, and now you have no money anymore. <laughs> the house just stands there like that, it's never, never done. And you don't have any money to finish the house. That's an example that Jesus uses. Or he uses the example when he says, there are two kings fighting against each other. One has this many soldiers, one has that many. So one has less, one has more. So now the one with less has to think and say, is it worth it that I'm going to fight against that king? Can I win, even though I have less? So that's when he says, count the costs. Because people will laugh at you. It's like, ha 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 ha, you started but you couldn't finish. Yeah. So people can also, yes, can also make you be afraid. People can pull you away from the path, the narrow path, which we have to walk. But you have to say, if I have decided to follow after Jesus, I'm going to remain on this path, come what may, no matter what happens. I'm not going to let the cross, it's too heavy now. I carry it for, let's say you carry it for 50 years, you're almost at the finish line, and they say, oh, it's just too heavy, you toss it aside. You will not make it in, because you must carry the cross. Like a runner. You must never give up. A runner also practices, the Bible speaks about this, yes? Please go ahead. If you're a runner, and you run, and all of a sudden, maybe it's the finish line, you stop. You don't finish your race. Just a little bit more. You give up. And then they say, see that. So you must, until you're through, then you're through. Nothing more than that. So we never give up. You know, if we know about rugby, right? South Africa won the Rugby World Cup again. So, two, two times in a row now. So, if they were to just give up because it is more, it can be many, and you just give up, you're never going to win the prize. You must continue, you must practice, you must be disciplined, you must have self-control. The same thing in faith. These things that we see in our physical life is the same thing it has to be in the spiritual life. But many people in the spiritual life think, that's enough if I read one verse in a year, when Jesus says, this, give us this day our daily bread. This is like cos. It's so cos, the word from God. How much do you eat? El Kedach. Every day we eat. But if we think, oh, I don't need food today, all right, you might be able to 
last for a few days, but if you keep on going, and you will eventually start starving if you don't eat. Same thing with drinking. If we don't drink, the word of God is like the bread of life. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. And he says that he's the water of life. If you don't eat and drink, you're going to die. People don't understand this. They have astounded me. That is, this is life and death. Life or death. It's not a joke. Who decides to follow after Christ must be sure that they want to follow him to the end. Because many people, many, many, many people, they start off good. They are fast. I used to, when I used to run when I was younger, I used to do sprints, not long runs. This is a Bible speaks about it's a long race. <laughs> but I used to do sprints. So I used to try to run faster than everybody. Try to run ahead. But if you stop before you get to the finish line and everybody starts overtaking you, you will not win. You must continue until you have reached the goal. And the goal is to be with Jesus in eternity in heaven. So, let us never give up. Let us continue and run the race, my father mentioned it, what the Bible says, it's a race with endurance. We keep our eyes on Jesus. We do not look here to the candles over there, or we look to the window over here, or we look back. We always keep our eyes fixated on Jesus. And we, we follow him. We follow him. I don't follow anybody else. I don't follow man, I don't follow dominis, I don't follow me, Bible teacher, I don't follow any man, I follow after Christ, but I can follow people. Paul says, follow after me as I follow after Christ. So it's not about me, it's about Christ. So what we do is we say, look, look at him, don't look at me. If you see a change in me, it's because of him, not because of what I've done. It's not because of my good works, which are as filthy rags, it's useless. But it's because of what God does in me. So let us be bold. Let us be courageous. Now let's read. That's why I try to always encourage you guys, not only because of this, but I have to always force myself. I don't want to read the Bible all the time. I want to rather do other stuff. I'd rather look at television series, I'd rather work, I'd rather do something else. That's my flesh. But I must be more than an overcomer. I must crucify the flesh. Daily. El Kedach. Every day. I decide, no, I'm going to read God's word. And eventually, it will become, things in our lives become a habit. If you do something over and over and over again, it becomes a habit, like brushing your teeth. I still have to force myself to do that too. <laughs> yeah, you have to force yourself to do certain things. Because if you do not, you have consequences. You have problems with your teeth, you stop paying, now you have to go to the dentist, or somebody pulls it out, or they give you a filling. So there are consequences for our decisions. The same thing in the spiritual realm. If I decide, I don't care, omni, then that will have an effect on my spiritual life. And the enemy can easily attack me. If I do not take up the armor, if I do not prepare myself, I do not have the word of God is the sword of the spirit. If I do not have my sword, I cannot fight against the devil when the devil comes. How can I fight? I'm not practicing. I don't know if you guys ever looked at movies where people are fighting with swords. They had to practice. Like this and like that. Like this. So different movements that they had to practice. And with their shield as well. They had to practice. And wearing the armor is heavy. It's not easy. But you must, your body must get used to it. I must walk in the armor. It protects me. I cannot walk without the armor. Would you be faster without the armor? Yes. But if you don't wear the armor, you are an easy target. They say you are sitting duck. Quack, quack. They come and shoot at you. They can shoot at you because you've got no armor. No problem. So it's very important that we are bold and courageous because we are, once again, we're in a war. 
Not only wars around us right now, Israel, what's going on there with Gaza, or between Russia and the Ukraine, and other nations, there are other nations where there are wars right now, which are deliberately not mentioned in the news. Many, many, many people die on a daily basis. But to be able to win, we must practice. There's a saying in the world, practice makes perfect. I must practice as well when it comes to my faith. I must be forcing myself to do things I usually might not want to do. But why do I do it? Because I love God. That's the most important thing. I don't do it because I try to work my way into God's good grace. If I do it, then God will love me. No. I do it because I love God. Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you say you love your mother, and your mother says to you, clean your room. Yeah, I love you, mama. I love you so much. But you don't clean the room. You don't love her. She says, do the dishes. You don't do the dishes. Your father asks you outside to help him carry something, but you've got other things that you do. You're deceiving yourself. You say you love someone, but you only love them with your yeah, mouth. That's so rude. If you love someone, you show so, it. If you love someone, love means I do something. If I love someone, I will do something. I will not, I'll so try to find out what is their favorite color. What do they like? What's their favorite food? Where do they like to go? What kind of things do they like to do? So I'm thinking about that. I put in time. I put in effort. Money. You put in of yourself. And that's if you love someone. So if we can test ourselves, the Bible says, test yourselves if you are in the faith. Whether you are in the faith, Paul says, we must test. Because it's better that I test myself than when I stand in front of the righteous judge, Jesus, who will test, who will look according to the word of God and say, you did not pass. Now you can fail as many exams as you want in the world. I'm not saying go to school and fail every exam. That's not what I'm saying. But you fail, why don't you give up? Yes. You don't give up. Exactly. You keep on getting up. No matter how many times you fail. But this exam, you don't want to fail. Because after you're dead, too late, you cannot retake the exam anymore. There is no second chance. So you want to pass this exam. You don't want to be, in the end, useless for God's kingdom. So, let us pray that God will give us boldness and courage no matter what happens, even if it means that we will lose our lives. Because many of, from the 12 apostles, the 12 disciples, those were, how many were killed? 11. 11 out of 12. They died for the gospel. They died for the gospel of Jesus Christ. After, yes. So, that can happen to us too. Why, so why do you think the other one? He lived until he was over 90. He wrote the, book of he wrote the last book of the Bible, Revelation, Johannes. He was alone in the cave. Patmos, yes, it's an island. He yeah, was an island. She, she was a, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The His name, Johannes. Johannes. So we're seeing the Dober. Johannes the Dober. No, he's another Johannes. <laughs> the Dober, he, his head was cut off. Because he spoke the truth. They cut off his head. Hello, kill him. But Johannes, there, you know, there are many people who have the same name. But that's the same kind of mentality that we want to have. Like Paul, like Johannes, like all these people. Johannes, you know what they did with him? They took him, they took a big pot. They filled it with hot oil. They lay underneath it with fire and they made it nice and hot, boiling hot. They took him and threw him in there. But it did not burn. Because God supernaturally protected him. And then the whole stadium, because they had a stadium. You know like when you play rugby, you've got a stadium? They had a stadium there too. So all the people were looking. And they're like, oh, why is he not dying? And they all believed them. They all came to faith in God. So then they said, they took him and took him to the island Patmos. 
better get him over there, get rid of him. So, when it's not your time, then God can protect you. But when it's your time, you must be ready to go. Because we glorify, what does Paul say? Whether I live or die, I am Christ, I belong to Christ. And I would prefer, I'd rather be dead because then I'm with God. I don't have that mentality. <laughs> we must have that kind of mentality. I'd rather be with Jesus. But for your sake, for the brothers and sisters' sake, I will remain here because God can still use me here. I can still be of use. I can still bring forth good fruit. I can still encourage you. I can still try. That It's not me out of my own strength, but it's the Holy Spirit in me helping people to show them how they can live godly lives. That's what we must do, all of us. All of us must go out and preach the gospel to everyone. All creation. That's everyone's job. Every Christian. And we must do it both. Boldly, courageously. And let's pray for that boldness. And specifically also now in these last days where more and more and more darkness is increasing and where more the love of many has grown cold and is continuing to grow cold. Let us continue to love. Let us continue to be changed by God's love and then we will have no fear. So let us end here at this point, the Bible study for today. You mentioned that you have a song that you want to sing in Afrikaans. And if you guys ever have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. And if you want, any, if the Lord gave you anything, anything you want to say, a word of wisdom, something that the Lord has laid on your heart, feel free to share. I read this in the Bible this week, and the Lord spoke to me, for example. All right. Sorry, you can Yeah. But he's already in school, but he's already in school, Let him come. You can always invite people. Everybody is welcome. So you never have to ask me if, if you want to invite women, invite men. God died for all, <laughs> so they can all come. Okay, I have something you know, to the salon. Uh huh. The salon. Ah, the Matthias. 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 Yeah, Matthias. <laughs> Matthias. Yeah, I just said. You know, you know, you see, I'm going to take it now. I'm going to Matthias. I feel like a man. I Twenty twenty one. Nineteen. Nineteen. Alright, treasures in heaven. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy 
and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Yes. That shows us. So how do we do that? How do I store up treasures in heaven? You know how to store up treasures on earth? Money. Yeah, I, don't, yeah, I don't have money with me now. But you start money or diamonds or gold or silver or clothes. You can use a lot of things. Something that brings in an income somehow. So I store up a lot of those things. It does not have to be money. It can be food. Whatever, anything that you can imagine. Yes, you store up here on earth. But when you die, you cannot take it with you. Somebody else gets it. So if you if you die, does your your brain still the same the, the memory share? Yeah. So you can still remember the Bible. Yes, God. King Solomon says that after you die you will not learn anymore. I do not know whether that's correct or not, but that's what he said. That after you are in Sheol, there is no more learning. But while we can learn here in this earth, yes, what we learn will be in our minds. But what it actually means, treasures that we store up in heaven. For example, people that we've told God's word to. When we evangelize, it's called evangelizing. If I tell someone about Jesus, the path of Yellow, someone we bring here, like people you bring here, who stay and who grow, who become disciples. The Bible says, make disciples. Disciples are people who continuously follow after Jesus. So it's not someone who comes and then goes away again and stays in the world. There are people like this. They come, but then they go into the world and they remain in the world. The Bible speaks about these four different hearts. I mentioned a while back. But you want to have those who bring forth good fruit, who remain in the Word of God, who will continue to follow after Jesus, who will, as the Bible says, how do you say in English, who will uh, continue until the end. So those who will continue cross the finish line, who will not give up, who will not throw away the cross, who will not cut a part of the cross off, Sometimes I can, or just take, make it a little bit more simple for them. Or let somebody else try to carry their cross. I do not know whether that's possible. <laughs> so, but people who, that is for instance, storing up treasures in heaven. Or sowing the seed. The seed is the word of God. We sow the seed. We are like seed sowers. We go outside and we throw the seed, the word of God, to people. So, these are things, for example, or the fruit of the Spirit that is spoken of, love, joy, peace. So, for everything that we do, Paul says it, there will be a reward. We will be rewarded for what we do here. And you will also be judged as a child of God. There's a different kind of judgment. It's like when you have, when you're in school and you have finished your school. Yes. And... Yes, and then they tell you how you did. You did good in this, in math, you did not do so good here, but you still passed. You understand? You still passed. But then there are those who did not pass. God will also judge them. And those people, they will go forever into a place called the lake of fire. A place where the fire never ceases. I can't even stand having my hand over here for a few seconds. 
So thank you very much for sharing that with us. So that's what you read this weekend. The Lord spoke to you. Yes, store up. Let us store up treasures in heaven. But that's something we must learn. I must also learn because I'm very much earthly minded. I must do this on the earth and that on the earth. But we must have, like Paul said, they, they had, it's amazing, the, what he said, as long as the gospel is being preached, as long as the gospel is being preached, that's what I want, that's the mentality I must have. I want the, to preach the gospel. I want to be bold and not ashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for the Jew first and then for the Gentile, for the Greek. So, then I'm not ashamed but then I go to people. They might think, oh, he's going to speak about Jesus again. But I've never experienced that so often in my life. It's usually the devil that makes you think, oh, they're going to make fun of you. Oh, they're going to hate you. Oh, they will maybe beat you up. They will kill you. So what are you? Are you a pastor? No, I'm not a pastor. <laughs> I'm not a pastor. Excuse me? Are you a leader? Are you a leader? No. I'm just teaching the word of God. Excuse me. Praise God for that. Not because, yes, of course, also because I was able to learn. You know, I sat and studied the word of God. But it's the Holy Spirit who's our teacher. Anybody can learn the word of God because the Holy Spirit is our teacher. And then we must also teach others. That's our job. job. You must teach, one day when you are married, God willing, you must teach your wife, you must teach your children. The same thing goes for you. When you are married one day, your wife, your children. Because you are, the Bible says you are the priest of the household. So you are responsible for the souls of your family. It's very, very, very important. Because you don't want them to go to the place where it is fire forever, where they will never get out. You want them to also make it into heaven. But they must decide for themselves. You cannot force them, but you can tell them. That's what we must do. That's why it's very important. The Bible says, do not be unequally yoked. Do not marry a person who is not a Christian. Because that person will want to do something else. They will want to go party. Maybe. Well, be, even, even if they don't party, they are I know unbelievers, very quote-unquote good people. But they still will not want to go to church with you. They will not want to raise the children in the Word of God. They will give them more freedom. Oh, you can do whatever you want. I did whatever I wanted. And look, I turned out so well. So there will always be this fighting against each other and you're not going towards the same direction. God says that it's like a different animal being with a different animal. Usually when you have a plow, you have two bulls around the same size. They're pulling the plow. But if you have a cow and you've got a donkey, I usually use that as an example, the weight is distributed uneven and they don't walk the same way. So God makes very clear the person. That's why if you ever intend to get married, very important, marry, pray, ask God, for wisdom, who the person is, because some people they will act like they're Christian, but they're not actually Christian. Actually, it happens. They act like they are God, but they fake. Yes, the Bible speaks about this: fake apostles, and they are also fake Christians, because she likes you so much. Oh, I love you so much. I'm going to just for you. I'm going to be a Christian. No, not for me. <laughs> you don't think I'm a Christian for me. Yeah, because you love God. Not for me. That's the wrong reason. So, you need discernment. That comes from God. So it's very important to pray. Seek God's guidance. Seek wisdom from elders. Godly men and women who can give you good advice. They sometimes see things that you do not see. Because when you are in love, they say, love is blind. Sometimes you don't see her faults, and she does not see your faults. Hmm? Okay. 
Ready? Yeah. Ready? Oh, all right. But he first the kingdom of God, his and his righteousness, and all the things shall be added unto you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So he's talking about he first the kingdom of God. See, and God will even bring your wife to you and your children. Right? Yes. Mm. Because many times I myself am the same. I'm looking, I always want to find the wife. Where's the golden wife? I'm on dating websites, looking for a wife, looking for the right woman everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's not what God says. And he told me already. No, not like that. Wait. He says, he says to me many times, wait. Wacht. Wacht auf die Erde. And in his right hand, if we seek him, then he will add these things unto you. We are focusing on him, and then here comes the wife, and there comes the job, and there comes the children. So it's getting, it's getting added unto you. Seeking after him, wife, children, car, job. Not saying that God will, let's make very clear, God never promises to give you riches and fame like some people preach, and stuff like this. God can do it. But he must not do it. Many of the people who followed after Christ were dirt poor. But they were rich because they had this treasure stored up in heaven. What is it? The treasure was not on earth. It can be rich, but it can be rich in the, the, the word of God. Yes. In not in the physical sense, which does not mean God does not. There's also the poverty gospel. I guess you could put it like that. There's the prosperity gospel. Where they say, all God does is give you money and riches and fame and he gives you the most beautiful woman and everything you can imagine. That's not what God says. But he also does not say, you must walk around and never have any money. And you must make sure that you are the poorest person in all of Napier. That's also not what God says. That's why. Know the word of God. So that you are able to, when people come with this, this is false doctrine, different kinds of doctrines. Doctrines of men, doctrines of demons. They will tell you, this is what says, and it says in the Word, but it's not the only thing that stands in the Word. That's why you must know what else stands in the Word. Look at the context. Context is all the time. The first context is, look at the chapter, whole success. They will take a verse and say, duh, 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 look, it stands in the Bible. Yeah, but what is the context? Read through the chapter. What does it speak about? Read through the chapters before it, the chapters after it. Read through the Bible. Where does it speak about the same topic? Let's say love. Where does it speak about love everywhere in the Bible? Then you can say, you're right, it does say that, but in the context it's, it, which you mentioned, it's wrong. It speaks about this, and it speaks about this, and this, and this. It's important to know, so that you're not deceived. You must know Jesus. Not the letter which kills, but the Holy Spirit gives us wisdom to understand. Or else we're not going to understand the Bible anyways. So thank you very much for sharing that with us. If you have anything to share, you can also always, you don't have to feel like nobody ever forces you, like I said. And if you would like, we can still sing the song, which you've got there. Is it something, do you know the song? I don't know, it's kind of weird. What is it? Yeah, you don't like it, it sounds like, I don't know. It's kind of weird. You can read it. Yes, you can read it. But I do. Unfortunately, I don't know the song. But we can. I can check it out, and I can know. Do you know the song? I don't know, but I can read it. Okay, you can read it.
Yes, thank you for that. So it mentioned that even if thousands or ten thousands fall to my side, it's the psalm that it mentions. Yes, it shall not come near me. When you read tonight, Psalm 91, it's a Okay, it's your father. Have you a radio? <laughs> Not yet. But is it in the radio? We have a radio, yes. No, we have no battery. But we'll have to check it out. I'll check it out. Maybe they've even got something on YouTube or something like that. Oh, okay. By that way, the radio will be displayed also in the speech or painting. Yes, yes. The sign of the robot. Have you a radio? Hey, what? Hey, what? Oh, Okay, Oh, Okay, 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 Okay. Every eight o'clock in the night, you can do a radio experience. Okay. Eight o'clock in the night. All right. Right down to the... Uh, Johan. Mm-hmm. What in FM or what? Uh, yes, in FM. FM. Okay. 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 FM. FM. We will check it out. You can find it out. All right. Uh, now at the end of the Bible study, as per usual, you can pray whatever God has spoken to you. Yes, exactly what He puts on your heart perhaps through the message that you heard today or what the Lord has spoken to you throughout the duration of the day. Ja, 
Our Father in heaven, I pray that you embolden us to proclaim your word like Paul did it, like John did it, like Peter did it, who were your disciples. They were your students. They sat under your tutelage, so they were taught by you. You taught them how to live godly lives, how to live lives pleasing unto you. They were your disciples. We want to be your disciples, not just part of the crowd. We don't want to just be those who are called. We want to be those who are chosen because many are called, few are chosen. Help us to be bold and courageous 
in the proclamation of the gospel of truth, that we are not ashamed of your word, that we are not ashamed of you, because you've changed us, you've given us a reason for living, you've given us life, you are life. Thank you that you are working in our lives, that you, as it says in a song, are bringing about a change in our lives. And in another song it says that it was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. But this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Thank you that you paid the price on the cross and you now expect us to take our crosses upon ourselves and to follow after you. We want to run until we reach the goal. We do not want to give up and fall short. But we want to continue. We want to serve you. We want to deny the flesh, crucify the flesh. We want to be led by the Holy Spirit. Please teach us. Thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher. Help us to understand your word. Help us to understand how we can live for you, that we can put into practice what we've learned, that what we've understood that we can live according to your word. We want to not be useless hearers, but we want to be doers of the word also, because we love you. Not because I'm forced to do it, but because I love you, because you loved me. We love him because he first loved us, 1 John 4, 19. Please let us love. Let us share your love with the people in Napier, because your love is the only thing that can destroy the hatred, that can destroy the murder, that can destroy the alcoholism, that can destroy the drugs. Only you, Jesus, are the answer to all these problems. We need you. We desperately need you because without you we can do nothing. Please guide us into all truth and righteousness through the Holy Ghost to know how we can witness to others, to know what to say, that our speech is seasoned with salt, that we may know how we ought to answer each one. That people who ask us, hey, why are you the way you are, that we can answer them? It is no longer we that live, but Christ that lives in us. May they see you, Jesus, in us. We must decrease. You must increase. And we must have that same mentality that Paul had. I just want the gospel to be furthered. I want the word of God to be preached. I want to preach the word of God. No matter what, let us love you in that way. Teach us, teach us, teach us how to love you. And use us, Lord, in this upcoming week, everything that we will do that will be done for your glory and honor. I pray for your blessings over each and every one here. I pray that you bless the work of our hands. I pray that you protect us from evil and from harm. Thank you, we heard today, a thousand will fall at our side, ten thousand at our right hand. It shall not come near us. We thank you for your angels that take charge over us, lest we dash our foot against the stone. We thank you that you are for us. If God is for us, who can be against us? And we thank you, Lord for what you do in our lives, what you have done, are doing, and will continue to do, because you will fulfill the good work that you have begun in us. You will fulfill it. You will bring it to an end. We put our faith in you. We don't let go of the word of God. We grab on for dear life, because you are the life. Please help us to reach our families, our loved ones, those who are not yours yet, our friends, even our enemies. We want to love them. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the people in Gaza. We pray for the people who are leaders of Hamas. Lord, we pray for all of them because all of them must be born again. We pray for that, Lord. All over the world, the war with Russia, and the Ukraine and all the other countries. Lord, we pray, even so, come, Lord Jesus. 
Help us to be found worthy to escape the things that are to come. But while we are here, as Paul said, I would rather be with you, Jesus. Let that be our mentality. Let this be our heart. Change our hearts that this is our mentality so that we can say one day together with Paul, I'd rather be with Jesus, but I am needed here. God wants me to be salt and light here in Napier, wherever you have put our stand. Let our light shine so that the people will see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven. May everything that we do, whether we eat or drink, or whatsoever we do, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer, our strength and our Redeemer. Let us do all to your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.